Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, building experiences that connect, remove friction, and deliver insights. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is Kimberly Diabald. Kimberly is the Chief Revenue Officer at Avalara. She is a global sales leader with over 20 years of experience in technology industry and co-managing go-to-market strategies, B2B sales, product development, operational excellence, and business development. Kimberly has built, mentored, and empowered many high-performance sales teams. She is a passionate, proven leader and is focused on driving customer experience and value to maximize revenue performance. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, Kimberly Diabald. Thanks, Ed. It's really great to be here. As you may not um, know, I was just at the Sage Partner Conference in Las Vegas last week, so it's great to, to be here with you today. Well, first off, Kimberly, why do you do what you do? Um, you know, when I think about that question, Ed, um, you know, I think about it in a couple different contexts. Number one, you know, I've had over 20 years in technology. And what I love about technology is how it transforms businesses, governments, and quite frankly, it's transforming our personal lives. So I think that there's just a lot of power in what technology can do. Can do and that's why I've spent over 20 years um, in it. The second is as a chief revenue officer, I love building teams. I love building businesses and leading organizations to figure out the best way to service customers, partners, and the ecosystem. And as a CRO, that's what I do every single day. Um, and I'm kind of a data geek. I have a math uh, undergrad degree and an MBA. So, so I'm able to kind of itch both of those, those uh, interests of mine. And then finally, tax. Um, people often ask, well, why, why tax? Why didn't you do something else? I think it's really fascinating what's happening in the space of tax automation. And we're at a very early stages of automating tax across businesses. So the opportunity to bring transformational impact to companies is vast. And that really just gets me excited to get up every day. Well, let's dig a little deeper on that. Why is tax compliance only getting, seem to be getting harder for businesses? Um, you know, it is true. And, you know, in many parts of our lives, uh, things that you think would be getting easier are getting harder. But when it comes to tax, tax has always been a burden for businesses. It's really a pass through, right? The businesses are collecting those taxes to business handing them off, hand them off to the government. There's no value that businesses get from it. And as we look at where we are today as a society, global expansion, becoming digital first, it is driving everything that we're doing. And tax authorities can see that. And they're adapting their laws, their taxes, in order to align to what's happening in the transformation of a digital society. Um, and in the United States, you know, we started our business in the U.S., focused on U.S. sales tax, um, consumer tax. And when you look at the, what's happening in the U.S., there was a big decision made um, in or on Wayfair and South Dakota, which drove this idea and concept that it wasn't just about physical nexus. It's about economic nexus because, you know, all of us were doing our shopping on Amazon and we didn't have to pay taxes, sales tax, because maybe Amazon didn't have a physical presence, but that no longer exists. Now all of the states can participate in collecting taxes, at the local level, at the special jurisdiction level, at the state level, against anything that could be sold, product or services. And there are a million combinations because I think we have over 12,000 jurisdictions in the U.S., tax jurisdictions. And on top of that, all of the changes around taxes, tax rates, tax types, we track it to be about 125,000 changes a year. And businesses have to keep up with all of that as they're trying to grow their businesses outside their, their states to become much more expansive. So there's a lot of factors that are driving it. And, you know, it's really becoming almost impossible for a human being to do this kind of processing. You know, you said something interesting there that I just want to pick up uh, on a little bit. And that is, is that when you think about it, businesses are really just the collector of taxes. The taxes are really being paid by the, the consumer, not necessarily the the business, although the perception is, is that it's the business. But the reality is, is it's the, the consumer or end user or even employee, employer, same situation, right? Uh, absolutely. And, um, you know, it, it's it's a requirement. It's a statutory requirement, right? So businesses can't choose not to do it. Um, you go out of business, right? Because the the expenses of having the penalties for not paying taxes 
are very significant. So it is a mandatory thing to do. It's regulated by the states. And so you must you must comply with it as a business um, or else, you know, you'll have massive penalties. And I'm going to shift gears on you now. You, on your LinkedIn page, mentioned that you are also an advocate for women in business in STEM. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, from the very beginning, I, you know, being that I was an uh, uh, undergrad in, in mathematics, I, there were not a lot of women that were doing STEM at that time. And, you know, I took note of that. And so when I graduated with my STEM degree in math, I really kind of saw that I was needing to give back to other women to tell them that there's a path here. So my entire career, whether it's been mentoring kids at high school level or college level or in my business across the organization, is I just speak to women about the opportunity, about the, the how hard it is, but how rewarding it can be, and that it's really a marketplace that is open to everybody to participate. So just by letting people know that you've been there, you've done it, you've kind of walked in their shoes, explain to them how, you know, what are some of the challenges, what are some of the opportunities, I think it just gives them confidence. And so I've done as much mentoring, and I'm part of a chief, the chief organization, which is a global organization for women in STEM and women in leadership that are trying to grow their, their uh, network and their, their skills around meeting women. Um, so I think that's really important. And then at Avalara, I have a great opportunity to, to lead the women of Avalara, where I'm mentoring everybody in the organization that wants to participate in that. And we have an exit question, Kimberly, that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours and why are they a hero? That's a great question, Ed. You know, when I think about that, I really go to my first thought was this uh, story that you may be familiar with called Hidden Figures. It was a, a book and then it came out as a movie. And it's really not a single woman, but there's three women that were key to the storyline around how we were able to put, um, you know, the, the early astronauts in 1960 around Project Mercury into space and at that time, there were three women, Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson. These three women would, is what I would call the, the human computers at the time. They were able to do all of the math calculations to figure out the trajectory of how to get the space uh, ship into outer space and return back to Earth. And I feel like they really, as not only three women, but there were three women of, of color and the diversity aspect around them, like they really showed the power of what you can do with STEM and how it can really change the world. And so I love that story. And that's way back in 1960. And um, so that's really kind of, I'd say my, the thing I look back on is kind of where the, the kernel of it all came from is, is these early women who broke ground for us all. And lastly, Kimberly, how can somebody contact you? Great. You can reach out to me through LinkedIn. Um, love, love to connect with you there. Drop me a message there. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about our tax automation solutions around sales tax and use tax, or whether it's cross-border or e-invoicing, we do all different types of tax, tax um, automation support and compliance. So if you'd like to talk to me more about that, I would really welcome the opportunity. And I want to thank you, Ed and Sage, for the partnership that we have put together. And, you know, we have great uh, connectors that work seamlessly with the Sage uh, ecosystem and all of the partners. So anybody who's out there listening um, from the Sage world, uh, we're really your answer for tax automation. All right. Kimberly Diabold, Chief Revenue Officer at Avalara. Thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate the time. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.